wife got seltzer cups, she is the best. My wife got seltzer cups, she is the best. We've been out of seltzer for like a million years, but now we have seltzer because my wife is the best. Oh, I gotta, I gotta bring chat up. One moment. Welcome back, one and all, to what is now apparently episode seven of trying to get the uh, floppy controller working. Um, we're turning an NES into a computer. I mean, an NES is a computer. It's just a PC. Uh, but right now, we have a keyboard on it. We have uh, some code that prints, that reads the keyboard and, and prints characters. And now, we are trying to get the floppy controller working. And we've been trying to get the floppy controller working for a minute now. So, yeah. Last time we tuned in, let's go to the old overhead. <clears throat> we rewired this thing. It was previously in AT mode, which... Uh, was not the right call. Um, it's it's from the PS2 era and has PS2 mode, which is uh, the more common, like if you ever look up how to uh, program for a PC floppy disk drive, they pretty much tell you about the registers in the disk root and the chip. And the AT mode uh, only exposes registers that are available in the PC AT, um, which really hampers us a lot. For instance, I have no idea how you turn on the drive motors because that's in a register that is not exposed when you're uh, in AT mode. So we swapped it from AT mode uh, to PS2 mode. Um, it seems to still be working. We haven't really checked the new registers, but hopefully maybe we will do that today. Um, also, so this wire here, if you're, if you're not familiar and or just joining us here, um, is going to the reset pin on the floppy controller because, of course, you have to hardware reset the chip. And there is the, the reset line that is inside the NES uh, does not go to the uh, cartridge port, which is annoying. So I've been working on uh, in this GAL, which is also programmed to do our address decoding between our EEPROM that has our game code and the floppy disk uh, controller. Uh, we're making another memory area that just stores one bit, and we're currently showing it on this LED and we will use that to toggle the reset pin on and off, but we have to get that working. Last time we discovered that this totally does work fine for those purposes, uh, but um, it doesn't seem to be responding to the address that we think that it's supposed to be responding at or that we wanted to set it up at. So the floppy disk controller is at A1000. The uh, EEPROM contents are currently available at uh, E1000 and this is supposed to be available at C1000. So it doesn't seem to be when we, the thing is all of this goes through an MMC on the uh, Super Mario Brothers 3 cartridge that is in here that is, that is hacked to allow us to do what we're doing here. And I probably don't have that set up right because all of those mappings are configured through the MMC3. So you can place where different things are at in memory using that. And so I'm thinking that I had this properly set up for C1000, but uh, that is probably not the case, so I need to review that. So we'll get back to seeing if we can get this infuriating little thing working, and then finally, um, if we have time, theoretically I have a floppy disk here, uh, I grabbed a floppy cable, we could not find this last time, um, and I still couldn't find the one that, that I'm actually looking for, so I just stole this from another computer, and we will restore it when I actually, you know, find the other one. Uh, but maybe plug in the floppy drive, power it on, plug it in, and see if we can uh, turn on the drive motor for it, because there is actually a register for that in PS2 mode. I don't know how you do that in AT mode. Uh, it's a mystery to me. But that's that. So, uh, yeah, let's start by reviewing our MMC configuration. And I must say uh, good evening to Wereworm, because... I needed to give that whole long spiel, and in the middle of that, they said, good evening. And I I would be remiss to ignore that. Oh, this is an interesting new thing. This started happening yesterday. For some reason, my display capture just doesn't work until I click on it in OBS. Isn't that fascinating? Right, 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 right. All right, so in the, the code that we have on the gal, uh, this is configured for... Because here's the thing, is that that C1000 is the in the NES's address space, but it is not, 
basically there is a, a bigger address space on the other side of the MMC3, and the MMC3 basically allows you to map windows of this big memory area that can include big chunks of EEPROM that are even, you know, bigger than the available memory space in Nintendo or, you know, similar things like that uh, to smaller windows in the actual 16-bit uh, address space of uh, the 6502. So that's what we have. So A17 and A18 are these high-order address bits that the MMC provides. Um, and it's the mapping in the MMC that controls if the C1000 area is mapped to, you know, some other area that where A17 and A18 are, are set in a particular way because bigger memory address space. Um, so, here's the deal. I need to be clear about this uh, in my own brain. We are decoding where A17 is low and A18 is high. So... Uh, that would mean that this should respond to any any MMC address that's decoded at, let's be really, really careful about this for sure. So A18 is our highest one, and it would be high. A17 is the next lowest, and it would be zero. And then really anything in here, because we're not checking the lower bits. Um, so that would be anything in... Right, because that would be, I just want to make sure, because I have a scatterbrain, so I want to make sure I do this very correctly, which has been a theme this whole this whole series. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then 17 and 18. So all of these don't, don't matter, but that means that the base mapping when we turn these back into hex, which is the actual thing I can understand and makes more sense to me, it's going to be 4,000. Does that make sense? Or rather, sorry, 40,000 hex. So we want the MMC3 to map C1000 in the NES address space to 40,000 in the MMC3 address space. Capiche? So, we already have code in here that's setting up the MMC3, but uh, I've already forgotten how it works, and that's good because now I can work backwards looking at what I have written and, uh, you know, see if it works out the way I expect. So, these registers, 8000 and 8001, are basically the two registers that allow you to configure the MMC. Uh, one basically lets you select what register uh, you are mapping to, and a register basically corresponds to there are several blocks of memory that you can map. So it, there are like, you know, three or four uh, 8K windows that you can map to different areas on the other side of the MMC3. So this first one is selecting the register, and then this is writing the value into it. And we were already using this for. So A1000, like I said, is where the floppy is. And we set that mapping up to 00, zero because that works just fine. <laughs> and we haven't had to worry about it too much. And that's the easiest one because the granularity of how big the uh, like the window sizes are and whatnot um, don't matter because 0 times whatever is 0. This matters because if, if the page is off and whatnot, that'll, that'll shift the bits of these, this address around and make it wrong which is potentially why those bits aren't getting set right. Uh, bits 17 and 18 aren't getting set the way I expect when down here uh, I am doing a store to C1000. There's the basic deal. So let's look back at this. So uh, we are doing, we are loading a literal 46 into that 8000 register. And now let us look at the documentation for MMC3, which is the one that is in the Mario Kart. There are many MMCs. And in here, so this shows you, I mean, if you've followed the program, you've looked at this many a time, this shows you all the bankable areas that are available. And this is the area that we're trying to map, theoretically. Um, 
Ah, interesting. This might be a plate. Wait. Because this might also be a thing that I don't understand correctly because uh, basically 8,000 through 9 FFF or C1000 to DFFF can be a switchable programmer on bank. And then vice versa with this chunk here, which is a which is fixed to the second to the last bank. Um, which honestly might be the way that I want to set it. Because <laughs> that might be might be easier. But there's a flag in that register select register uh, that controls whether this one is the is the fixed bank or or if it's you know if it selects which one is the fixed and which one is the remappable area. So could totally be that I'm getting that wrong. So I am specifying register six here. That's why the low order byte is six. It's four six. And then let's see. So This is character A12 stuff, which I do not care about. And this one, it's, we're setting this to four. So theoretically, this is the one that I'm setting, this P bit. And that is program ROM bank mode. So if it is, whoop, according to this documentation, if it is zero, then 8,000 is the swappable area, and C1000 is the fixed area. And other way around. So so this seems right because I wanted to set C1000 to the swappable area. Though again, now it occurs to me the easiest thing to do would probably just be to put it to fix mode and then just map the the uh, the little one bit register to that second to last bank area. Um, though actually that may be difficult because the banks are only 8k and so that involves bits below A18 and A19. So actually, on second thought, maybe not such a great idea. So that part appears to be right. Um, and R6 is selecting that. What we're going to write to is the, OK, so here's the thing. Select the 8 kilobyte program ROM bank at 8,000 or C1000, right? So theoretically, if this is set, which it is here, then this would be C1000, right? I would imagine. So then the next question is the question of these program banks. So yeah, so if 8000.d6 is one, these are terribly written, but, uh, oh, it's bit six, nice. Um, so if d6 is one, then it's going to be the value of whatever's in R6. And we are setting R6. My, my other question is, like, if you can't do these in one cycle, like if I have to set this bit in one call and then set the register in another call, that eh, doesn't really make sense to me, though. So I'm going to just assume that is not the case. So, so far, so good. Uh, da, 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 da. So the question is, what am I putting in the bank data? Which is 2O. <laughs> and if that is, you know, these are these are 8K banks. Let's see, do I have Python on here? I love using Python as a calculator. Oh, I don't. But I mean, also it's PowerShell, so. Next best thing. Um, so 8K is going to be. I, I've done this before the last time. It's something like hmm. Can I just do that and will it print it as decimal? Yes it will. Nice. Okay, so that is oh my god. What is that? Something big. 262k. Yeah, that ain't right. Uh -huh -huh. I could just not guess at this, but I'm going to just guess at this. Okay, right, right, because hex 1000 is 4k, that makes sense, so hex 2000 is 8k. So that would be, what 
what I am theoretically doing then is setting setting this mapping, if this works the way I think it does, to the hex 20th, the 32nd 8K page in MMC3 space, right? So if we just multiply 8K by 32, then it ends up being that. <laughs> uh, which, what am I trying to figure out here is, which is very funny because that's actually my original, my original value. Um, the real question is, if that was a binary value, which this is just, we know it's, we know it's 4,000, or uh, what, like 40, yeah, 40,000, 40,000 X. Uh, that means which bits are set? What did I write down earlier here? It's 40,000. Hmm. So, this leads me to think that I am definitely not understanding something correctly here. Right? Because those match. I'm getting 40,000 here, and I'm getting 40,000 here. So, that means that the granularity on this register has to be it's, it's got to be not uh, 8K. This has got to be my guess, because this is the assumption we made last time. Sorry, when I say last time, I mean the original, you know, when I was first working on this. And that's got to that's be not correct, because going, going backwards and from first principles, if, the, if this has 8K granularity, then... real problem here is that uh, there is, like this documentation is kind of okay, but kind of real bad. Oh, wait. This is interesting. So I, I was wondering about this as well. Check this shit out. I don't understand this shit. Does somebody else understand this shit? Hey, Trey. Uh, I gotta read my chat. I don't read my chat. I have been scolded for that before. But Check out how this IRQ latch register is at C1000, right? Um, C1000 to D FFE even. All of the even registers in that area are the right to the IRQ latch register on the MMC3. Don't know the details of that register. Whatever. Doesn't matter. The docs say, and then the IRQ reload register are the odd addresses in that space. So how the fuck, how the actual fuck are you supposed to be able to use those memory areas when there's registers there? I guess, oh, you know what it might be? You know what it probably is? Yeah. It's, uh... because it's program ROM space, and these are writable registers. So it's got to be that when you write to them, it doesn't, it doesn't trigger all of the external stuff. So the extra address pins and the chip select and whatnot. Oh, you bastard. That's what it got. It must be. That's the only way. Um, yeah, that, I mean, that's exactly. Wearworm is always like five minutes ahead of me, and he got to that same spot. Oh, uh, Daniel Rodriguez says, hello, any chance you can up your volume? I sure can try. Oh, it is very low, isn't it? I'm sorry. I adjusted it earlier and didn't adjust it back. Let's see. One moment. One moment. One moment. One moment. Okay, is that better? That looks better. Cool. Sorry about that. <clears throat> sorry, sorry, sorry. And sorry for anybody who, had to, who was watching this and turned their volume up and had to adjust it just now. So, yeah, where were I think you're dead on. I think you're totally right. So, what, what do we do? What? 
we could. Hmm. You know what we can probably do is steal. Hmm. We might have to do some wiring. Let me let me look at it. But we might be able to steal some of the uh, SRAM space. Could be. But yeah, yeah. Um, that is interesting. It's got to be like only for those ones because obviously the A thousand area for the floppy disk controller is uh, that makes it through just fine on writes because. Or no, because we've only done reads. Mm. We have only done reads from the floppy controller. So writes may be may get chucked off into space. Woo! That's annoying. That is. Yeah. Interesting. Alright, you feisty bastard. Though, wait, well. No, no, no. Right, that was what was on my mind. Sorry, there's a lot of things to keep track. So, actually, right to that area... Um, ah, no. I was going to say, should be fine because of the test we were doing last time where we used... I was using A1000 to toggle this thing on and off. But that's... We were doing reads from A1000. We were... Oh, man, that is a pisser. Ah, uh, shit. You know what's a real quick test we can do, actually? Is roll back to the same test we were doing last time. And instead of reading from the floppy controller, we'll do a write to the floppy controller memory area. And I betcha it will not work. I, I bet, I bet, I bet that's what's up. So I think I can just control Z revert all this shit. No, it has like a one change buffer. That's cool. Well, anyway. We'll just do it the manual way. So that was... Uh, do, 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 do. What even was it? FTC chip nickel. Not FTC chip nickel. And now, let's just let's just build that, confirm that it works the same way that it did yesterday, then change the ROM code to write to that address. And I, I bet you're right. Watch it. Excuse me. Watch it not work. And then we have to figure out something else, such as stealing some of the SRAM space. Mirroring that SRAM space might be the way we have to go. But that also means suppressing SRAM chip select. <laughs> oh, what have I done? <laughs> we are in an interesting space now. Well, let us see. Because uh, the whole thing is, at the very least, we may get super lucky because there is nothing at... A thousand, I believe, as far as MMC three registers. No, fuck off. <laughs> it totally does. God damn it. God damn you. Uh, okay, well, let's just do this and then confirm, confirm that theory, because it sucks, but it's pretty obviously gonna be true. Yeah, that's sad. Which means we have to rethink a bunch of stuff. Uh, no, I don't want to change that. I just want to program. just off the chain today. Uh, 
Okay. I mean, this isn't... Nothing is going to happen right now, because... I mean, this should just blink on every key press. I'm not even going to bother bringing up the video capture. Yep, so, as expected. Now, now, now. Now. Let us go over here. Let us go to... Uh, this part doesn't really matter anyway, but... Let's switch this to a story. Sorry, thinking, trying to remember what the hell I had going on here before. So we were. We were loading the address and then pushing it. Okay. And then pulling it to print it? Oh, for the bit shifting. Duh, duh, duh. Um, right. So, anyway. Let's... I mean, this is just gonna... Just gonna be garbage. Yeah, let's just switch this to a story. And, I don't know, load a AA, just so we have something that is not complete garbage printed to the screen. Compiled. 29 e 10 Load our bin. Basic bin. Offset one ten thousand hex. Remove the Ebra. Place the Ebra. Program the Ebra. Clear the check ID bit. I'm getting better at this. Neat. Okay. Are you ready for this to just straight up fail? Uh, for double checking purposes, let's see, where is my, where is my video capture? It's hiding over here. Well, let's get that reset as is required. Cool. Okay. Prepare to be disappointed. And then we have to rethink some architecture on this whole goddamn thing. Here we go. Wow, look at that. Damn it! God damn it, wereworm. Why do you have to be right? Fucking fuckity fuck. Oh, you know what though? Okay, so we're gonna need to get SRAM back on here. That's gonna be a thing. But I think we might wanna hijack the SRAM port as well. Um, I think let's map things into SRAM space and it's gonna be tricky because we only have so many inputs on the gal. So, you know, we would want to make our uh, our memory checks for the areas in, in the SRAM region uh, as as small as we can so that we don't lose too much SRAM space because we do want to have that available for basic. Um, but that might be the only way to go. That is so freaking annoying. Uh, huh. And it's not like I can just like cut the right line or something because we need to set the MMC3 registers, which requires writing to the MMC3. Um, yeah, 
So, let's look at this SRAM bit of things over here. So, the SRAM mapping is... You do 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 do. You do 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 do. Alright, so that is 8K from 6000 to 7 FFF. Neato burrito. So, I mean, for starters, we could definitely just have a mirror address somewhere in there. Like, we don't have to overwrite. Well, first I have to look at, I was, I was just going to say, we don't have to, like, sorry, uh, override the chip select pin for RAM if we're just, you know, doing that. Writing to the this one register at like one small location in there, but uh, there are two things. One, I need to look up where in MMU space that SRAM is actually getting mapped to. Um, we'll see if it's actually clear in here, or if I have to trace what uh, address pins are actually connected to the SRAM. And. then we, we have to be able to read from the floppy disk controller and we don't want bus contention with the uh, with the SRAM itself which means overriding the chip select on that thing. Yeah, Trey, the, the mapper is getting in the way. It's The mapper is getting in the way because for the program ROM areas it only responds to reads. For writes, those are all registers internal to the MC3, that whole memory area. So you can't, you can't, it doesn't assert any of the address lines or anything when you write to one of the internal registers. So any writes get eaten by the MC3 is what we just learned. So, yeah. Super fun. Let's see where the SRAM is. Bloody da 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 da. Program RAM. Program RAM. Program RAM. Ooh, that's going to be important. <clears throat> Good to know. We're definitely going to have to enable it and make sure it is not write protected so that it doesn't bung us in the ass even more. <laughs> I don't care about any of these. This might be useful, maybe a pinout. Higher Q crap, I do not care. This is all higher Q crap. And wait. It's saying stuff about program RAM, but I don't think anything useful. Cool. That's good. <laughs> yes, so here is that pinout. <laughs> okay, so of course program RAM has its own chip enable. Uh, I mean, I guess... I wonder how many pins are on the program RAM. I mean, it, it, it'd be an 8K chip, right? So that's kind of self self-explanatory. So... Right, there's not there's not going to be like any special addressing shit on here or extra address pins. It's just going to be when you write to that address, yeah. it asserts this chip enable. Yeah. Of course, I'm overthinking it. So, stealing the program RAM chip enable. 
probably quite doable. Might do that in just a second here. And then the question is on our, this guy, how many inputs do we have available that we can still use because, well, let's see. Basically, I want as many high order address pins as possible here. Um, so we're really gonna need like this to become chip enable uh, ROM chip enable B. That is already an output. Um, let's see. Let's call it program chip enable B. And then three and four right now. Okay, so right, well, yeah, so we actually can pretty much get rid of these because our EEPROM, if we do it this way, our EEPROM is just going to take up the entirety of the program address space, um, which is fine. And that means we can use more of it and have more uh, ROM too, which is, which is nice. But that also means we can get rid of A17 and A18 because the only reason we were using those was to decode between the EEPROM, the floppy drive controller, and this one bit register for, for resetting the floppy disk controller. Uh, so if we take it back to that thing, just that the EEPROM is just takes up the entire program ROM space, then we don't need those. So we can clear those out. That gives us some more pins. We will still need this D2 pin um, because that's the value that will be written to our little one bit reset register. And we still need the read write signal uh, if for no other reason than I went to the, all the trouble of <laughs> connecting it up inside the cart uh, but also we obviously need it to uh, do reads and writes to our peripherals so how many input pins do we have here again and I believe because like for example we don't need we had this delay for chip enable but we don't need that we do not need it anymore um, yeah so might need to do some rewiring on the back of there but i believe all of the pins on the right side of the chip which are these pins uh can be inputs or outputs so we can compare let's see how many we have left let us look at the data sheet for this again atf 16v8b Doodly 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 do. Yeah, so these can be inputs or outputs. So let me just look at everything I have available. These getting rid of. So one is taken, two is taken, six is taken, eight is taken. That is weird that I don't have uh, seven taken. Um, Oh, should I just reroute a bunch of these so that it is less stupid? <laughs> I think I, I think I might. Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? For to to get it out of the way, let me turn this off and yank the cartridge and find the chip enable pin on the SRAM and mess with it. I don't want to clip it, so maybe we should try playing with the new with the new desoldering gun. Pull the whole thing off, bend the pin, put it back in. You want to give it a try? I think I want to give it a try. Uh, I need to find my game bit again. That is not the right camera. That is the right camera. And then I also need to use that. But first, let's get this cartridge on open. You know what I'll do when I uh, start desoldering. I will read chat so as I have something to say. Yes, yes. Yoodly doodly doodly do. Unscrew this thing is what I'll do. I think I just rhymed do with do. 
Won't you please not judge me, won't you? I'm in. And so to recap, uh, <laughs> that is my uh, read-write thing. <laughs> And this is probably going to get a little weird because I believe, uh, yeah, I'm pretty certain I'm right, that this, let me get this big black rectangle out of the screen, uh, this guy under all the wires, not inconvenient at all, is the SRAM. Uh huh. Indeed. Um, let's get this desoldering thing set up. See if it does stuff. See if my investment was uh, worth the seventy-five dollars. Hey, I have power right here. Convenient. She lives. She lives. I wonder if I should perhaps. Put some more solder on these pins? I don't know. We, we'll see. Literally, literally my first time ever using a desoldering pump, so. Yay. Wish me luck. Okay, I guess I'll start reading chat while I wait for this to warm up. Um. Oodly doodly doo. Two bits in says, so you're in invent reinventing Nintendo Home Basic? Basically, yes, you nail it. Um, so they never they never uh, had a floppy drive. So, I mean, they the f yes, yes, yes. I know the uh, Famicom disc system was a thing. Never worked with Basic though. Uh, just had a bus driver and overpower the RAM outputs. Yeah, yup. Uh, yeah, family basic. Uh, two bits in said, er, family basic is what I meant. Correct. Um, Trade MC says, maybe we'll have to remap the I.O. range for the floppy controller with some glue logic. Um, well, the, the thing about the floppy controller is that it doesn't intrinsically have, like, it doesn't know anything about addresses. It has three address inputs just for selecting the internal registers that you're reading or writing to, um, which can be attached to anything. Uh, and then um, there's just the chip select pin. So it's all it's all the external glue logic that determines where it's mapped at at all. Right now, we're using the scale for that. So uh, it's not like we have to override anything in that chip. It, you, you have to tell it where, it, where it's mapped anyway, because it doesn't do that. Oh, shit! <laughs> Dave is in, and he says, You'll never guess what I got executing code today. Uh, I'm going to guess it was your 6502 course. So it took you, what, like two and a half days, maybe, to get it? He had no... This guy had no... He, he's doing the Apple II uh, on a uh, FPGA, but just saying it's an FPGA is underselling it a little bit, because it's an FPGA that should not be messed with, that was never meant to be accessed and rewritten. And uh, he had no 6502 written uh, last weekend, and now he has a 6502. Just in a couple days, NBD. Uh, <laughs> and he says, the desoldering pump made the right noises at the show. It sure did. Um, and it seems to be hot, and it uh, seems to be making pumpy noises, so... <laughs> Two bits in says, I wrote an NES emulator on FPGA once. Uh, just didn't finish sound mappers. Yeah, I feel like mappers are probably the most annoying part because there's, you know, a billion of them. All right, I do feel like I'm probably going to need to slash want to put more solder on here, but let's just see how this goes right now. You know? That seems to have worked. Huh. Why do you know about that? That's pretty freaking sick.
Alright, I definitely need more practice uh, knowing how long to hold it. Yeah, I think I am going to put some more solder on here, though. The view. Let's just make a solder stack. Yes. There is nothing weird about this setup. It is not a mangled tower of unkempt, dangerous materials and tools. I don't know what on earth you're talking about. Oh, goodness. Lots to say uh, from two bits in. Um, wanted to kind of build an FPGA and NES where you could stick in cartridges and all. Uh, if you can write an FPGA core, probably wouldn't be that much harder. Uh, but the chip shorted chit, and my plans were foiled. Soldering stations rock. <laughs> Desoldering stations. Even the Chinese ones. I mean, they're, you know, they're better than what I had, which was nothing. I will take this over nothing any day. Am I heated? I seem to be heated. Let's glob. Oh, I was going, what? What's so warm? Yeah, it's the desoldering gun directly under your arm. Smart guy. Yeah, sorry in advance. I don't know what I what I am doing when it comes to using a desoldering gun, except what I have seen on YouTube and understood poorly. And I think adding more solder to suck is a good start. That is the first time my OBS has disconnected in a while. It's crazy that it still happens, honestly. I am streaming at such a low bit rate at this point. Anyway, I was just saying, fresh solder, regardless, seems like a good idea. Seems like it would flow better, right? I don't know. I'm making this up as I go. Such is my entire life. Sorry, focusing will say interesting things in a minute. I'm almost there. Two bits in said, all I'm missing now is a good microscope and maybe a BGA rework station. That's hardcore. That's hardcore. <laughs> and Dave is just describing the Apple II project, which, I mean, it's just cool. It's a thin client. I described it in the last video, I believe. So do, do check there if you uh, want to know more. I do seem to be kind of messing up the solder mask here a little bit, but uh, I won't tell if you don't. Yeah, it seems to be working way better. Tell you what, it's better than solder wick. It's a sight better than solder wick. In lieu of me uh, 
saying things while I'm doing this. Uh, please, please read, uh, please read Dave's description of his cool FPGA thing. Thank you. That one might be done, and I just have bad eyes. Whoops. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know about that. I don't know. Is this riveting? No, it's not riveting. That would use a rivet gun. This is desoldering. Come on. I thought that was fairly obvious.
Now, this may not be that entertaining, but keep in mind that uh, the <laughs> the last time I did this, using uh, Chipquick and Solderwick. Yeah. That was like a whole episode in and of itself, so. Could be significantly worse. Let me promise you that. not want to let go of its solder for some strange reason. So, if it's solder that it wants, let's give it solder. Yeah, that's a good one. Now I... Seriously doubt that got the whole chip all the way out, but I mean, the holes look goodish. Probably just have some tiny little solder ridges on the edges of the hole, and if and when I find my tweezers, which are right here, maybe we can break those. Yeah, that does seem to be the case. Every single one of you? Yup, every single one of you. Uh, that one seems good. Maybe that one's good. Maybe that one's good. I mean, like, if I just try doing one of these. What starts happening? Do I just break things? Seems like maybe. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm just bending pins all over the place. You can't see what I'm doing. How about I do this? How about I do this? There we go. That's a smart move. Yeah, there seems to be a decent amount of, amount of solder on the top of the board is the thing. So some of these want to move, it seems. I have a strong solder bridge right here. Where room says, don't break it, hot air would be nice now. Yep, that's the next thing I'm gonna try and find a nice deal on. Because hot air rework stations also annoyingly expensive. Also, I mean, like, not the end of the world if I break this SRAM. I don't really need it for anything. But, you know, again, trying to be able to reverse this if possible. I see you. I see you, little solder connection. You can't escape me! Maybe you can. I don't know. Oi! Okay. Well, that side's up, I guess. Uh-huh. Now we just have to find out where the connections are on this side. Where are you? Where are you? Connected to the thing. 
This side seems a lot better. Honestly, really, it seems like it should just come out. This side seems fine. Seems fine, but I don't want to yank it. Honestly, that looks okay. That sounds like a good pop. Oh, hell yeah, bro! In not terrible condition. <laughs> Wearworm said, you won't break the SRAM but the board. Yeah, good point. Good point. But it seems... It seems... Okay. Seems all right-ish. Uh, okay, so now... The question is, what is the question? Um, I guess there is no question. I guess really all I'm doing is taking this SRAM and determining which pin is the chip select. Let's see really quick, actually, because I had that MMC3 pin out. I might just be able to look at it and go, oh, it's that one. You do 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 do. So, let's see, where is pin, okay, so this is pin one on this spot that you can't see, and it is pin 30, oh, that, that isn't pin one, interesting, that is pin, that is pin 34 and 33, fascinating, anyway. So, going uh, this way, it is the fourth one from the right, I think? Is that what I'm seeing? Okay, now I can turn this off, I guess. Ha, 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 ha. One, two, three, four. And there's a nice via for us. Two, yeah, one, two, three, four. Yep, it's this guy. Nice little mark. Nice little mark. Where is my thingy? Wereworm, get ready to beep. You know your job. Yo. Fuck back here. Ha -da 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 -da. So, let's see. From there. Well, I should, I could probably just trace that. Let's see, one, two, three, four. That's easy. Uh huh. One, two, three, four. It goes. It goes. It goes. It goes. It goes. It goes. Guillotine. Oh my god. I don't know if it's my eyes or my brain, but like I just cannot follow traces when they are running parallel next to each other. It's infuriating. I think it's this one. Prepare to beep. Prepare your beepers. One, two, three, four. Yay! So if I am indeed looking at that correctly, that is my chip select. Uh, yeah. So what pin is that? Boy, was anybody paying attention when I took this off the board? I mean, I guess I could go look back at the video, but... I, get, I think I kind of whoopsed in that I was not paying attention to where... Oh, no, no, no. Cool. There's a silk screen on here that shows me which way pin one is. And the nice thing is, I think this is just a standard SRAM. Oh, now I have moved the camera too far. Here. Uh, beep indeed. Thank you, Werewolf. Um, so even if, even if I did break this, I think uh, any, any suitable EEPROM that's a normal EEPROM will do. Because this is... Now on the floor. <clears throat> Firstly, the board has narrow and wide footprints, and it, it's not like a specially branded part. Like these these mask ROMs are specially branded, but this just says NEC. Looks like a standard standard chip. Anyway, so boy, I sure did like trace out where chip select was, and then just not make note of it in any significant way. Yeah, do, 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 do. One, two, three, 
form. Sorry, I'm just going to do this again. And then, like, actually try and pay attention this time. And get lost in my own probes. One, two, three, four. Yeah, okay, now pay attention. It's the one next to that trace, and it's the one that has this scratch next to it now. There we go. So, when we put this back in... Oh, I kind of tangented there. Yeah, the whole deal was I noticed that there is silk screening for pin one, uh, kind of the outline for the, for the indent over here. I don't know if you can see. There's some goldishness here. Um, but there also is for the narrow package, and that's what even made me realize there was a narrow package footprint there. So that's neat. And let's see. Because, sorry, what I am trying to do here is, ray, is pull up the chip select pin on that package so that I can feed it a separate chip select signal. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so I can hijack the chip select for the RAM area, and then I guess I need to wrap this over the top of the thing. Because otherwise, it's going to poke into my other wires. Wow, you can't see anything I'm doing. I am very good at that. Okay. It's over the top of the chip. Hopefully that's the right one. I would not be surprised one lick if it was not the right one. Because that's how I do. And again, why I've been kind of trying to do a goodish job of double checking things. <laughs> double checking my work. Boy, come on. It's gonna be funny if getting this chip back in is, you know, turns out to be harder than getting it out. Where are you binding up? This is turned back into lockpicking lawyer. Yet again. Yep, we've got slight movement on two. You know, right side of the chip, left side of the chip, I mean. You should just, the right side of the chip is doing a great job. It's going right in, it's already all the way in. Why can't you be like that side? That joyful feeling when you're just pressing and each of the pins move freely just fine but the damn thing won't go in. That's the fun that I'm having right now. And a fly has landed on my face. Thank you, fly. Sorry, you probably also can't see this, but I'm trying to really look closely at what I'm doing. What is wrong with you? too good for your home. Apparently! <sighs> sorry. I'm sorry that you have to see this. <gasps> yes, there we go. There we go. 
And of course now the other side isn't going to go in because that is how it would go. One or the other. You cannot have both. Still better than doing the mask run, though. <laughs> Still better than that. Let me make sure that is very clear. Try and at least get this somewhat over here on camera. Well, most of the pins aren't that screwy. It's mostly just that they have weird amounts of solder all over them, and they are bumpy, and so are the holes. have to really make it feel bad about itself. And hopefully I didn't fuck up these pads too badly, because I know... Yo, what the hell? Oh, one of these pins just shat itself. Damn it. Cool. Yay. Yay. That one. That's not supposed to look like that. So anyway, I really hope that this <laughs> this uses the standard JEDEC SRAM uh, footprint, because God knows I might be needing a fresh SRAM pretty soon. Hmm. still watching at this point. That's what I would like to know. Okay, now we're going to try and rake this lock. fucked up another pin. Wow, this is going amazing. Remember that, that premonition that I just had about getting it back in being harder than getting it out in the first place? I'm sure, you know, if I was doing this properly uh, and was good at it, this would have been done a while ago. But that ain't me, yo. That ain't me. It sure doesn't help having this ribbon cable in the way. Well, let me tell you what. Let me tell you about it. Anybody got a pin straightener sitting around? Yeah, because that's what I can use, really. Because these pins, they're not that far off from each other, but boy, it sure doesn't take much for them to just not line up. That whole uh, 
maybe we'll turn on a floppy drive motor tonight thing. Very optimistic. Very optimistic. <laughs> we'll see if we can get the SRAM in by the end of the night. Yes, 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 yes. <gasps> Okay, can I actually be excited this time? Are you in for real? Are any of the legs fudged up? <gasps> no, it looks great! It looks absolutely spectacular! Alright, now you get to watch me solder these legs back in. The most fun part. As if you weren't already thrilled. Uh, 6116? SRAM? I don't know. Uh... It's got numbers on there. I don't know my SRAM numbers. Um, where I'm said, so why have we removed the RAM? Disabling the CE was not good enough um, because I'm going to use the CE that was going to that chip to also drive the peripherals because I'm going to put the peripherals in the SRAM space and I'm going to steal some chunks of SRAM space uh, for that. But I don't want the chip to be enabled at all if I'm accessing those bits. So I am stealing the chip enable off of that, and then I will be feeding a new chip enable back in, which is why I folded the leg over the top. Uh, what do you think of my read-to-write idea I proposed above? Apparently I totally missed that. Uh, why am I looking for a mouse? I haven't had a mouse here ever. Not once. Ah. Uh, you can take a 256-byte address space and latch the lower eight address bits to be written to the address on the next read X. Oh, yeah. So I was thinking in the back of my head about something like that, but I think it's just not worth it. Um, it's just, it's way more complicated than just doing this and just stealing that chip enable and stealing some chunks of mammary. Uh, ha, 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 ha. David Cooter says that was a common thing on ROM-only systems back in the day. Interesting. Uh, where I said check if it's the right way around. It is. There's a solder mask thing on there. Um, 6264 SRAM, 64 kbit, 8 kilobyte, notch to the right when card edge is down. Uh, that seems right. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> where it says just black top the chip and sell it as new old stock on eBay. Uh, and that it looks great. So it must be the wrong way around. Um, thank you for. Uh, everyone for suffering through that with me. Why did I just turn off my soldering iron? I was just about to put this chip back in. Whee! Fun times. Okay, I am going to tilt this camera down again because I am working way back here today. And just in the back of my head, do I have to pull any lines from this chip other than the chip select? I do not think so. At least this part is straightforward. And then where were? I mean, can you tell me? Do I have any more uh, unused wires on the cable? Because you were the one who said, use the unused wires. Why are you even running those things over to the board? And I use the, uh, the no connect. That, I, that It's a no connect on the EEPROM. Uh, and five volts on the mask ROM, and I was running a wire anyway. So I hijacked that one for the read-write signal. And then the uh, there should be some other ones up there, because the write enable, of course, I want to always be high, so I could just wire that one to high, so maybe that shall be the next one I steal. find out when we try using this SRAM. Remind me to do a memory test later when we actually uh, start using it for basic things. 
which thankfully I don't have to worry about too much because that will be ages from now. Absolutely ages. You know what, what time is it? How long have we been going? Oh, I've been going for almost an hour and a half. Um, okay. Maybe... Maybe I will try and get the one-bit register working again. I was going to say, you know, we could try turning on the floppy drive motors maybe, but... I think that is... Optimistic. But the one bit register, maybe. Oh, okie dokie dokie dokie. So, I'll actually need two wires because I need to run one back uh, for the SRAM chip select dealio. And I'm going to flatten this out just a touch. And, you know, try not to break the pin, but whatever. Uh, but also, we can worry about running that wire back later. Let me see which ones I used for what. I used, and now I have to angle this thing back again. Because I just can't keep it together. So, let's see, it was... So, the top three pins over here are all... 5 volts, and yes, so I believe this one, this one, this one is my EEPROM write enable, which I should just freaking bridge to 5 volts. Well, let's just do that. Let me double check the pin out, just, just to be dang all sure, but it should be. Twenty nine E O one O sure. Oh, this stupid site. This goddamn site. It works, but boy does this site make me feel skeezy. Oh, and I totally downloaded this too. Totally did. Yep, it's right there. Sure, why not? And then open it. Which I could have just done in the first place. You do 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 do. Give me pinouts. Give me pinouts. Give me pinouts, please. Pinouts. 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 There we go. Yes. So. Yep. That is right. Enable. I am correct. So let me just bridge those two pins and take that wire off of there, and then I can hijack that wire off the board to steal the SRAM chip select signal from. I should probably take some things off my desk. But, uh... Also... Nah. Okay, so let me... S well, while I'm back here... While I am back here... Oh, let's remove these headers. Or the, remove the cable. It'll make my life easier. But every time I do it, it makes me feel bad. Okay, so that should go somewhere, but you know what I'm going to do first is I am going to remove a bunch of the absolute horse shit that's, on, that's wired up on this gal, because most of it is absolute horse shit and could be consolidated. All of these ones for the delay crap. I am going to remove the chip enable from the clock input because I'm going to want to use RAM chip, or uh, yeah, SRAM chip enable for that. So, yep, disconnect that. And. Is there anything I need to move around? Let us look at what I am doing in Kubel, and if I should reassign. So right now, pin 2 is program, chip enable, B, that's fine. And then, just nothing and nothing, which is weird because... Oh wait, I'm looking at the wrong ones. Those are, those are the output pins. That is, okay. Whoops. So, sorry. 
19 is ROM, chip enable B, yes, that is connected up properly, that's fine. 18 is floppy chip enable, which is also fine. Uh, 17 was floppy right. 15 was going to be reset, so I will... Wait, actually, there is nothing on 16. That's stupid. Let's do this. Let's move floppy read to pin 16 while we are in here. Consolidating. Cleaning. Making it beautiful. So we'll move that to 16. Because that used to be used for, like, the, uh, hoozy doozy. One of the delay, the chip enable delay thingies. Um, because. So now I need to move 14. It is 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. This would be easier if there wasn't a big metal box to my right. Getting up in my elbow space. Who oh, put that there? Uh oh. Don't melt the ribbon cable. The chaos is really, really coming on strong today. Feels good. Feels good. The more chaos, the harder I'm working. Okay, so those seem fine. Those match the software. Everything is mapped up now and clean, which means also that I have three, if I'm reading correctly and remembering correctly, three free potential inputs or outputs left. Yay, on that side. So that's good. And then we should probably consolidate some stuff on the input side. So one was our clock, which, uh, we will wire up when I get the RAM chip enable over there. And then we had a program ROM chip enable. Wait. No, sorry. That is the chip enable coming in from the NES. That looks fine. Then nothing. <laughs> After two, there is nothing on three, four, or five, which is fascinating because there definitely appear to be things connected to those pins. Uh, huh. Oh, are those just signals? Oh, yeah, 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 duh, that's gonna be a, a uh, 17 and a 18, which I am no longer using. Right. Um, and then so, a 17, a 18, and nothing, so. I will get rid of those, which will give me more places to put inputs. More not quite as high order bits for checking my EEPROM area mapping doodad, whatchamacallit. Who's he wants it? Away with you, foul beast. Yep. Yep. Okay, that surgery is complete. So those are no longer attached to anything. And then six is D2. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Five, six. That seems right. But you know what? While I'm in here, firstly, let me give this a better solder job because it soldered kind of wonky because I had to go over those other wires. So we can fix that up. Uh, and potentially consolidate it a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, let's actually put that maybe on pin three. Why not? No reason not to. One, two, three. Cool. And the 
main thing was right now it's on D2, but that's stupid. It's because I thought D2 was D1. And I said, fuck it, and just renamed it in Koopal. But now let's just wire it to the right one. So that was 2, 1, 0. Because that makes more sense. All right, so let's do a little relabeling on that in the source. So D2 is now on 3, and then NES RWB. I mean, F it, let's scoot that one up too. Why not? Just so that it's easier for me to remember what pins I have available. So right now that's on 8 which should be easy to find, because that's the only one that I haven't screwed with yet. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Wow, look at that. Amazing. And we will just move that up to 4. One, two, three, four. Perfect. No one has done anything more perfect ever. That's the best thing that's been done. And let me just change that to four in Koopal. Done. All right, so that is cleaned up. Now let's just, uh, I guess let's put over in Koopal, I will call it pin five is now going to be SRAM chip enable negative and uh, let's just run a wire and then I should be done with this side of the board for the moment let us I have wires let us make use let us make use so that was this fella you said as if you can see this fella from where you're at. Just trust me, it was that one. And then we'll put this on five. Maybe, maybe trim it on up a little bit. Let's see. Let's see. Let's just trim, I don't know, last half centimeter off here or something. <clears throat> don't have my nail clippers down here right now. It's messing me up. I swear I just saw my tool. There it is. I swear I just saw my tool is also what he said. It's just a fact. And put you on five. One, two, three. Oh, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, that's a thing that I have done. That has now become one of the many regrets in my life. Excellent. Just try not to break it too bad, you know? Whatever. We won't worry about that. We're just not, we're gonna flip this over and we're not gonna look at that anymore. And we're gonna look at chat real quick because there has been a good amount of chat. And then we will connect up the wire properly on the NES side. Hoba doba doba do. Oh, 88T is here. Uh, so I have some ideas for Sega Genesis solder a bunch of serial I2C memory to just get joystick port 2 and make it like an SSD. Uh, load and save some pictures and maybe some music, but this is just an idea. Yeah, that should totally work. Um, the Genesis's controller ports are 
super duper flexible. Um, they're basically GPIO ports. They also each can be a slower speed but still usable uh, uh, serial port. Um, there is a mode in which you can kind of operate them in, in there because there's like three modes. There's like serial, GPIO, and like some other mode that does a weird thing. But you can uh, you bit bang it as GPIO and you can you can connect I two C crap to it all day. Uh, Wearworm said you use thirty thirty one should be redundant at the moment. I think that's exactly what I did. Uh, Santiago said, hey, let's hope it works today. Um, yeah, yeah. You missed you missed the beginning, I think, Santiago, because we figured out why it wasn't working, and it's because it won't let us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Super Mario Brothers cartridge is starting to hurt more than it helps. Maybe reconsider buying an NES prototype in BCV? Wereworm. Sometimes you just you miss the spirit of the thing. I'm not using the Super Mario Brothers 3 cartridge to help me. Not even a little bit. Not even a touch. It is it has hindered me the entire way, 100 percent from from jump it has hindered me. Uh, and Dave says, I swear I'm gonna send you some nice wire strippers and flush cutters. You you and everyone else, dude. I'll uh, if it if it shows up someday, then I'll stop talking shit about it. But until that day comes, over my dead body. All uh, right, so we are taking that pin. From here, which is this one. And lifting it and moving it and attaching it to SRAM chip select. Which we should actually have slack in this wire, and I should actually just be able to use this bit of wire to do that, which is soup's cool. Instead of doing the weird uh, extension that I had to do on the other one. It's going to be awkward, but it is going to be doable. I wonder if I can go around back. I'm just going to go around back. That is the safe move. And it goes here. Right here. Oh, I guess I could have done it on front on the MMC bit, huh? I guess I could have. Um, but I'm not going to. Because it's my prerogative. All right, that should be a thing. And now it's going to be about writing some software and completely changing how we're doing things. Which, you know, NBD. And dropping screws yet again all over the place. And hearing them land, but you know, you you hear exactly where something like that lands, and then you look for it, and it's not where you heard it. It's just universal. It's like I don't know. Maybe maybe demons are real, and that's all they do. They just make you think you heard things fell in a place that they did not fall. That's it. That's all they do. They're just like super petty. And of course, also watch all of the uh, connections get totally, totally effed when I put this back together. All of the wires break. Everything's terrible. Yeah. Uh, but at the very least, this should still... Mm, no, actually, I was going to say this should still boot and work as soon as I plug it. No, it should. It totally should. Because um, I was thinking, you know, we're, we're still using the uh, gal to handle the the mapping and that won't work for the things that aren't the EEPROM but the EEPROM is still sitting in exactly the same space that it always was so we will want to change its mapping a little bit at some point maybe so that we have access to more of it since it now is taking up the entirety of uh, program ROM space, but it should work right now if I just plug this thing together, so. And then we'll just have some random writes to places where there is no hardware anymore. Okay, now this one is really bad. This screw fell on my foot, 
and made no sound and disappeared. Hmm. Well, that that's a problem for future Joe. Cartridge. Inserted. I said, inserted. I said. Inserted. Yes, first try. Try not to break this frickin' thing, which to be fair, I have only done once so far in this whole time. Pretty good track record, if you ask me. And... Yes, that is lined up correctly, and... Okay, I hope we're making contact of some sort. Well, let's see if it does some stuff. And then I'll try and see if my mapping for other things you know, can be made to work now off of the SRAM space. Aha. Uh -huh. Seems fine. Let's do let's do our power check, because that's always a thing. <laughs> Where's my thing? Right here. It is right there. Because it's probably just the dang cartridge not being plugged in very well. That is not the right mode. Whoops. That is the right mode. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's currently getting nothing volts. That's not the correct amount of volts. Nah. Nada, nada, nada. Hello? Hello, is anyone there? Apparently you're getting power. Is it something I did? Nope. Uh huh. Well, this LED is lighting up. That indicates to me that there's some power somewhere. Oh! You foolish man. Um, I have to redo the gal. Because this version doesn't have the move around chips. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Well, that was very optimistic of me. Well, all right. Let's just pop this out and. Oh, we're going to have to. Yeah, because this is not going to compile right now, is it? Because I removed A17 and A18, and those are still being used. Yeah. They're being used in expressions, but uh, not, you know, they don't exist. So, I mean, ROM chip enable is, I mean, it's literally just going to be the chip enable signal. Um, we Honestly, we don't even need to really run it into the gal. We could have saved another chip there. Fudge. Oh, well. Uh, but yeah, so now ROM, ROM chip enable is just chip enable. Maybe, maybe on a later day I will alter that. Um, floppy disk chip enable is going to be a totally different thing. I'm just going to set it to one for right now because that is going to be based on our SRAM mapping. Use this weird syntax where I have to make it a binary number because Koopal. 
and then I mean that's that's fine and right the so here's where we can play with this now let's just make anytime that we write to okay okay so here is gonna be the fun thing if let's let's use the right signal because we wired it up and we never actually used it right um, well let's okay let's not get ahead of ourselves let's just change this to if not uh, what are we calling it SRAM CEB so what I'm gonna do for now is any attempted writes to the SRAM area will should result in that bad boy toggling oh right and I need to that is one hardware thing that I still need to do is connect ROM or uh, SRAM chip enable to the clock input of that chip cool so this is basically like it was before except instead of using the floppy drive uh, chip enable signal derived from uh, A18, A A17 and A18 of the uh, program ROM address space, we are going to be mapping it to the SRAM space now, theoretically. For right now, that's not going to do anything because uh, I did not hook up that signal to clock. So let me add that really quick. And then I shouldn't have to touch this hardware for a hot minute. I uh, had more wire bits sitting around here somewhere. Alright, so that is pin one and that is not long enough. Let's find a better piece of scrap. Okay. Pin one. And let's let's trim this up all neat. Yeah, right about there. sure I'm down to one fly in here with my fly mitigation attempts but of course that one fly is the most dickhole fly of the whole fly clan uh, those seem soldered together okay all right so that is SRAM chip enable being wired to the the clock on the gal. And I still need to program this chip, so <laughs> let's do that before I forget. So let's see if this compiles again now. Run. Compile. Three warnings. I don't like that. Oh, uh, right, because we don't have... Right, CEB is not a signal anymore. It is... Uh, prog PRGCEB, PRGCEB, and that is our chip enable for the program ROM, in particular. Cool, 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 cool. And I think that's that. Let's run it again. Yay, one warning, and that should be the one where I'm missing a header thingy that we don't care about. Missing header items. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's program it and then see if this thing starts up. Soldering iron off.
probably been one of my quietest videos to date. I don't know why. It's just one of those nights for some reason. Quietude. Solitude. Sleepiness. No, why am I... Wait, yeah. I was trying to combine the name of both of the chips. There is no such thing as an ATF-29010. Uh, ATF-16V8B, that would be the name of my PLC, PLD, GAL. Go. Uh-huh. Yeah. How about I load some data? Let's do that. Let's do that. I think I want to do that. Now, program. Dirt Piper returns. Good to see you, Dirt Piper. You may be lucky enough to see this work normally. With no major functional changes. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. Okay. Here we go. Still doesn't work. Cool. Uh, that's fine. What, uh, what, uh, what you gonna do? Mm hmm. Do I feel like messing with it tonight? Because it's probably just bad connections. It is probably. Just bad connections at this point. But I think I wired up everything right. I think it looks okay. Just making sure I don't have any like really dumb obvious shorts or oh! <laughs> um I mean, that may or may not be my problem, but remember how I was supposed to connect the right enable pin directly to 5 volts? Yeah. Didn't do that. That could be an issue. So let me do it. Let me just go ahead and do that. Do you mind if I do that? I'm going to go ahead and do that. You know what I've decided, actually? I'm going to go ahead and do that. <laughs> Waiting for a soldering iron to be hot. <clears throat> this fly very much likes faces. You know, the place where you least want a fly. He's good at his job, is what I'm saying. This fly has been around the block. And my face. I'll use my nice flush cutters. Perfect. Okay. I don't have a strong feeling that that will fix things, but that would have definitely been a problem. Nope. No fix. Ain't no fix. All right. How much am I willing to mess with this? How much am I willing to futz with this? <laughs> Check that there's not anything stupidly obvious in the gal where like uh, no the floppy chip enable is always set to one I made sure of that so shouldn't be causing a bus conflict or anything that floppy controller it should be off <laughs> the ROM chip enable is connected to program chip enable that seems fine. It all seems fine. Let's wiggle some things and then potentially give up and try some more things tomorrow when I have my energy back and I haven't been streaming for two hours. 
as I said, Dirt Piper, you will be lucky if this, uh, if you see it just working like normal. Fascinating. Fascinating. Is the LED turning on? The LED is no longer turning on. That's fun. And by that, I mean it is not fun. Let's do the old power check. See, it keeps saying nothing, but it was saying nothing before, too. Uh, and uh, that was incorrect. But it is definitely just straight up saying nothing right now. Let's check directly on the back here. gonna be a no. Yeah, I'm not seeing nothing here, man. Let's do some more jiggling. Y'all want to do some more jiggling? Ooh, you know where else I can check power just for fun because it's easier? It's right here. Nothing. Okay. Jiggle, 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 wiggle. Wiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Jiggle when you wiggle. Wiggle when you jiggle. Jiggle when you wiggle. Something is definitely truly weird here. Okay. Is uh, my meter must just be stupid? Cause that LED is now definitely on. And this is still definitely not doing anything. Okay. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Just out of curiosity. We know the LED is on. Yeah, my meter is doing something stupid. Let us not trust the poor quality meter that is garbage. Hmm. Oh, I might have to open the cartridge to make sure I didn't break any wires while I was in there. Probably gonna have to do that. Because usually this isn't this flaky. Maybe the EEPROM got corrupted, but how? I mean, we can try reprogramming it really quick, but... I don't know how that'd be possible. It's probably just a bad connection somewhere. Probably. Uh, oh, dang it, where were we? Right, because right enable was connected, but I guess it could get corrupted. Usually you have to do like a really specific write cycle, but that's, you know what, that's, that's a, that's a thought. Let's just do that. This is the last thing I'm going to do, okay? Because this is this stream's at two hours already, and I am a sleepy boy. But you raise a good point. Two nine e e. Oh one o. Oh. That's where I am bound to go. Load it on up. Grab the thing. This nipple mouse is a piece of shit. I feel so bad saying that. My wife spent a lot of money on this keyboard. And it's otherwise pretty decent. I'm just, you know, the whole reason you buy this keyboard. I have bitched about this so much. I'm going to shut my ass. <laughs> it's, it's too much. Check ID, doodly D. Program the guy here we be. Also, what was the meter set to? The meter is set to the DC 10 volt range. So like the battery must just be dead or something. Which is weird, because the O meter was working. I don't know. It's a it's a piece of shit meter, so. Um weird. Oh. 
for the, like the second time in this program, I have not actually yanked the lever on the ziff. Okay, all right. Let's see if your theory is correct. It's not the craziest thing I've ever heard. It is quite possible. Oh, God. The fly is trying to infiltrate my eyeballs. Nope. Nope. No bingo. Okay, some bingo. <laughs> oh, there is bingo. All right, there we go. A thing that sucks and does stuff. Uh, okay, do I bother? Uh, I'm probably, let's see, it's 1046. I would like to like be sleeping at 11. That is not gonna happen either way. And my question is, should I just try wiring up the uh, the register doodad real quick? Because, I mean, that is the point of this whole freaking exercise. By the way, uh, just for your credit, Wearworm, I'll assume it got corrupted. Let's just assume it got corrupted. Why not? You can have that one. May have been. We'll never be able to know. Or if it was just plugged in weird. Okay, let's see if I can do this with my brain, like, in shut-off mode. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, right, actually, this should already be set up. Right, I forgot I did that. So any write to the, to the SRAM space should theoretically write to that register. So I think all I need to do now is... Uh, this code is garbage and we don't care about it, but this code, oh, this code, what was the area, was it 6,000? <laughs> 6,000 to 7 FFF is an 8 kilobyte bank. So let's try... Placing that with 6,000, and like, will that just do it? Because that would be cool. That would be quite neat. And right now, okay, so right now it should just toggle when I do that. It's still just in, in toggle mode. Just checking, checking my maths. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But I've built it, and I'm gonna run it. Uh, Trey, you missed, honestly, not much. <laughs> it works again. But we've rerouted a bunch of shit, and hopefully maybe the little one-bit register will. Will actually freaking work now. And then tomorrow we can work on, uh, hooking up some address lines to the gal. As many of the high order, but not two high order address pins as we can to segregate some of the SRAM address space without losing too much actual SRAM. But for now, we have built the thing and we shall program the thing. Let's load the thing to the thing. I will hit OK on the thing. I will take the thing out of the thing and then put the thing into the thing. And once I have placed the thing in the thing, I will lower the thing, thereby entrapping the thing within the thing. Then I will click the thing and then also click this thing. And when I am done clicking that thing, I will click this thing. And then I will switch to this thing and pull this thing out of this thing and reinsert this thing into this thing. Carefully, carefully. And then I will lower that thing and 
turn on this thing. And no bingo, interestingly. Huh. That's actually very, very strange. Um Pretty said, did you need glue logic to remap remap the FDCIO? No, I'm gonna do it all through the gal. I have I have enough remaining resources on that gal to to handle it, but we haven't we haven't done that yet, so. And this has now gone insane. Yeah, so that is not toggling that register at all whatsoever. Cool. Well, disappointing, but we've been disappointed before. And usually when we have an episode that ends disappointingly, the next one is uh, fun. So cross your fingers for that. And we're going to figure out, I mean, the, this has been the running project, basically. We've changed so many things for so many different reasons, but it all boils down to getting this freaking register to work so I can use it as a reset for the floppy controller. Yeah. Um, we're going to make it happen. But power off for now. And I will see y'all. Wait, let's do this the proper way. Y'all are company. I, I, you deserve you deserve me to look you in the eye and say, see ya, love ya, bye bye.